Welcome back everyone. In today's lesson, I want to revisit uh, cascading style sheets for a minute. Now, uh, in earlier lessons, when we talked about cascading style sheets, we uh, mainly used them to discuss uh, visual elements on the page, the way things look, etc. Uh, and today, I actually want to talk about CSS in terms of layout. Now, we did a very little bit of this um, when uh, you know we did the class resume. Uh, but what I want to talk about is more specifically how you control elements on the page, um, you know, how things are going to fit together. And what we're going to talk about in this lesson is relative positioning. Okay, it's a concept called relative positioning. There's two types of positioning. There's relative and absolute. Absolute is pretty much, you know, you tell it what coordinates, either in pixels or percentages you want, and it's going to going to flow there. Uh, but actually a very powerful tool is using relative positioning and you're going to be able to get away with this a lot. And I'm going to give you an example here that's going to um, that's going to uh, kind of communicate this. Okay, as you can see we have an HTML document and I want to explain what's going on here. It's pretty straightforward. I've got two div tags, two layers here. Okay, and the first one here you can see is a div with an ID called the image and it contains an image, an image of some eggs. And then below that I have a second div which is kind of big because it's got a lot of text in it here and this div is called the text very original and it just contains some paragraphs of some Greek here okay now what I want to show you is uh, what is known as the flow of the document so let's pop over to the HTML here and let's see what this looks like now with no styles applied at all this is the default flow of an object okay this image up here is inside of a div tag if you remember, and that div is invisible otherwise, but it does extend 100% the width of the screen. And below that you have the second div, so the flow is pretty simple, it's just top to bottom. Okay. Now, the flow, when you're dealing with style sheets, it's kind of like you know how you would read in English, it's going to go top to bottom, left to right. And what if I want to bump some of these images around, what if I want my text to flow around uh, the uh, image of these eggs. Okay? Let me show you how this works. There's basically two components involved here. Well, in this example there's going to be one component, but let's, let's first of all we need to put some styles into the header. So I'm going to drop down into the title and let's go ahead and uh, let's create a style tag type text slash CSS. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to simply say uh, what I'm going to say is I'm going to say I have a div uh, with the ID called the image. Okay? And let's put some curly braces. Okay, now what I'm going to use is something called a float. Okay, and what you're going to do, this is how it's written out, you're going to say float, F O O A T, colon left. Okay, you can float things to the left or the right, and we're going to see what happens when you float something to the left. Let's save the document, go over to the HTML, refresh the page, and lo and behold, the text floats around, actually specifically the image is what's floating and the text flows around the float element. Okay? So I've told this to float onto the left. Okay? So you can see here we are, this is kind of, we have some margin problems that we would need to go in and correct. The, the uh, type for instance sits kind of on top of the image and visually that's kind of distracting and looks weird. Uh, but right now I just want to show you how the layout's going to work. Uh, the opposite of float left, let's go back over here and let's say float right, R-I-G-H-T. Okay? pop over here, refresh the page, and lo and behold the image is now going to float onto the right. <coughs> the text will flow around it from the left side. Okay? So that's specifically what you want to do if you want to float, um, float an element on the page. Okay? Let's go back here for a second and let's change this back to left for a second. Uh, now if I wanted to go in and visually, just so you can point a reference, we're floating on the left. Uh, if I want to go in and correct some of that margin, uh, one thing I can do certainly is within the image I can say margin right and give this uh, you know, a margin of um, 50 pixels, let's say. It's going to be way too big. And there you go. See, it's a little too big. I'd probably want to go with something like 20 or so. And visually, you see that's a lot cleaner. I can also affect the margin on the bottom if it's a little close for, for uh, my taste. So anyway, so that's just a simple layout using floats. Um, now what I want to do is I want to control the layer. I want them to float side by side. Okay, I want my text, and think of the text as an element. You can see that now our standard div kind of concept is not so much square anymore because it's got kind of this dual rectangle thing. It's floating around, or it's actually flowing around the float item. Uh, let's say I don't want it to flow around. I want them to sit side by side. Okay, well what I can do is I can come in here now and I can drop below that and I can say now the div with the ID of the text and I'm simply going to tell this to also float left. Okay. 
refresh. Oh, did not happen. What is going on here? Well, let me explain what's going on here. By default, okay, in other words, if you don't tell the browser anything as far as styles, generally the default is going to be that a layer is a full 100% width of the screen. So you can see up here the eggs are actually this image sits inside a div tag or a layer. And this div is actually the full 100% width of the screen. So what I can do in here, and same with the text, it's also going to be 100%. So in this case, what I would need to do is go in and assign these widths, okay? Because I don't want it to be a full 100%. So let's make this width, uh, I'm gonna make this, let's make them both uh, 300 pixels. And I haven't checked the image size, but I'm guessing it's around that width, 300 pixels. Now I've signed both width of 300 pixels and I've told them both to float left. Now what will happen is you can see, in fact, that they do float side by side, okay? And you can see that that layer continues all the way to the bottom of this div and it does not wrap around the image. That's because both layers or both div tags are told to float. Okay, so there's nothing that's going to flow. What would flow? Well, whatever's next in the chain. Okay, so if I have another div tag, it would probably flow around these two. So that's why I have to float things. Now, you may be wondering, well, why didn't I float this one left and this one right? Well, you certainly can do that, but what I want you to get a grasp on is, is what's known as document flow. Okay, like we said earlier, um, it's going to flow left to right, top to bottom. So what I'm doing is I'm getting these elements to kind of sit side by side, and I'm cheating a little bit by using floats. Now, that's not really cheating, that makes sense. Now that makes sense from a code point of view and from more of a scientific you know, numbers stance. And for designers, that's a little hard to wrap their head around because we're used to using things like Photoshop or Illustrator or even InDesign and uh, manipulating layout in a much different way, okay? Um, but for an purposes in uh, relative uh, uh, layout techniques, this is, uh, this is what we're using here. So anyway, I hope that makes sense and we'll move on to the next clip.